All right, in my last tutorial, my last GIMP tutorial, I took a picture of my girlfriend here and I added like a blurred effect right in the background. You know what I mean? It was more like a motion blur. I'm gonna use the same picture, but I'm gonna be adding a different effect this time. I'm gonna be using like, like a desaturation along with colors to modify the picture to kind of give it a little bit of a different look. Maybe like an old grainy kind of like a, like a newspaper print, I guess. You know what I mean? With some added color, make it pop a little bit. Um, kind of, I guess, kind of common with the whole kind of goth look I guess more or less you know what I mean I'm gonna change the color of her hair as well so uh, anyways let's get started gonna open this thing up with a GIMP here and I'm using Kazam today uh, GTK has been has been acting up with a uh, with long I guess uh, with the uh, what do you call it tutorials I guess you know what I mean because when I use like blurs and motion blurs whatever for whatever reason uh, GTK recording my desktop gets really out of sync when I do stuff like that but anyways, uh, go ahead and duplicate this uh, your your layer here, and uncheck the eyeball. And that's gonna be your backup, just in case you need it. And the way I do things is basically I kind of make templates, right? So I'm gonna make a template of her hair. So use the lasso select tool, the lasso thing, and go ahead and just start drawing around her hair, right, like so. And this might be a good time for me to stop, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of it, kind of see what, so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, these fine thread threads or strands or what do you want to call it, you know, try to pick them up a little bit, not too much. Uh, coloring hair is a little bit lenient; it's not that bad. All right, going to go back over here. All right, just keep going around. Um, I much rather use it this way rather than a scissor tool because, depending on how the quality of your picture is, yeah, it's kind of grainy. Uh, your scissor select tool is going to be kind of sporadic. It's going to go everywhere trying to pick up a, a fine line and it's not going to really find it. You know what I mean? So uh, just continue continue on doing this. I'm going to stop the video about right now and uh, when I get done, I'm going to you know have it all you know uh, highlighted, I guess. So I'll uh, be back in a bit. Okay, I just got done selecting her hair and um, you know, if you take your time, it'll come out right, you know. Uh, like I said before, her hair is a little bit lenient, you, you know, I mean, you don't have to do it too too perfectly, but it helps. Um, if I were to fill in the selection right now, it will cover her face. So right now we have to, like, select around her face. But in order to do that, you have to minus from the selection. So let's go to our our tool options for our uh, lasso tool, or free select tool, I should say. And right here it says uh, subtract, all right? So click on that and continue to... Uh, you know, draw on the inner portion of her face, you know, see what I'm doing? Like, uh, like her cheekbone, you know what I mean? Separating her face from the hair, right? So keep doing that, and uh, you're going to keep doing that all the way around, you know, past your hairline, go around through here, get some of the hair, you know, depending on what picture you're working with, you know, grab some of that, go all the way around, you know, uh, you don't have to get all like fine detail, but just as long as you come all the way back around and connect with your first starting point, that's all you gotta do. All right. So now I gotta stop the video again. So I'll be right back. All right. So I got done pretty much uh, outlining her hair and the uh, outside portion of her face to to subtract it. So when I it fill in this image with a color, you know, it won't cover her face, right? So. Right here on your layer dialog, it's a good time to uh, make a transparent layer, so press OK. Move that transparent layer all the way to the very top, and uh, pick a color of your choice, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to go, I think I already have a preset, like this nice little maroon, I guess. Uh, usually a, a darker color of the color you're trying to achieve will, will work a little bit better, rather than just putting like a bright red, you know what I mean, to make it look red. It'll end up looking more like a, like a clown hair, I guess, like Ronald McDonald or something. Anyways, uh get the bucket fill tool like this and uh, go on the tool selection for the bucket fill tool where it says fill smaller colors this section click on the one on top where it says fill whole, whole selection and uh, fill it right and right here if you wanted to I mean uh, if you wanted to stop here you could you can just like put this layer to like uh, I believe soft light you know kind of give the, the hair a different color and you can uh, you know go to select none give it a small little blur maybe, you know what I mean, and kind of help it. Use your fuzzy brush to erase certain, you know, imperfections you don't want. 
right? But I'm going to keep going from here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back to normal. I'm going to grab this layer I just filled, that transparent layer, and put it back down here. Okay? That's going to be a, like a template, like I said, in case I need it for later. So what I'm going to keep on doing now, go back to your top layer again. And uh, on your free select tool right here, click on Add to Current Selection. Now we're going to continue to select your body. Go all the way around. All the way, you know what I mean? All the way around. And uh, end it to a good point right here. And I'm going I'm to do that right now when I get to there. And I'll restart the video once more. Alright, so I just got done making the selection of her, right? Okay, so when I go up to this point, right about here, with my free select tool, this thing, uh, I pretty much, like, just drug, I mean, with the line, you know what I mean? I just drew it all the way across, connected to this other line that, that I started, hit enter, and it makes your selection final, right? So it's a good time to make a transparent layer. Well, you kind of need to make a transparent layer is what I'm saying. So make a transparent layer. Uh, use your bucket fill tool with the selection color of white and uh, fill in the layer right now go to select none use your uh, I'm sorry your paintbrush here <clears throat> to fill in the rest of the of the image so we're going to fill in right here fill in with white alright now we're going to get this image and just throw it at the bottom somewhere um, I usually uncheck the eyeballs you don't, you don't have to do that but this is something I do um, you might, well, I take that back. You might need to, all right, until you need to actually use it again. But anyways, so the reason why I do these little templates is because it helps to re, um, let me just show you what I mean. Right-click, alpha to selection. So when I do that, see how it's reselected, her body, right? That's the whole point of it. Like if I need to, you know, select the body image and if I need to invert the image to blur the background or I need to, I need to like flip the image back in, to like lighten her up a little bit with uh, some colors or something, I can do that easily with the little templates I just made. Well, having to redo it, oh, you know, the whole drawing around the body and all that crap again. So, anyways, let me go select none. Same thing goes for the hair. Right click off with the selection on the hair. And now her hair is selected again. So, anyways, select none. So, let's keep going with it. I'm gonna probably polarize the background so let me get her body again the template right click alpha to selection so I got the template I gotta flip the image or flip the uh, the borders right so I'm gonna go to select invert so now I have the background selected not her so we're gonna go to colors polarize on this top layer I almost made a mistake right now on the top layer right here where it says background so now we're gonna go to colors polarize okay Three's fine. You can adjust if you want, but three looks good to me. Kind of has an old, like, kind of a, kind of has an old grainy newspaper kind of thing going on. Anyways, uh, so now let's try on this bottom layer here and just duplicate that, that your backup layer. Go ahead and like you know make the eyeballs visible again. So now you got three layers to work with. So we're gonna be working with the bottom one right here. Okay. Let me uncheck the eyeball so you can see what I'm doing on this top layer. So we're going to do a gradient map, right? We're going to map a color to the background. So to do that, uh, find a gradient that you like. I'm going to go with this blue color, okay? And we're going to go to colors, map, gradient map. See how the background just turned like this weird blue color? That's fine. Now go to the top layer. Re-enable the eyeball again. We're going to set, set that to uh, soft light. Okay. On this middle layer here, we'll set that to a soft light as well. Okay. Now you see you kind of gave it like a nice, cool, desaturated green, like a really oddball kind of color, but it has that kind of weird grain look to it, you know what I mean? I don't know, I like it. But you're probably going to notice something about her. Every time you do these overlays, she turns orange. That's because you're you're duplicating the layer on top of a layer 
and uh, you know making it transparent but at the same time it's being overlaid so her her color maximizes and the background doesn't because you're altering the background so we're gonna go ahead on these two bottom layers right here okay go select invert so now she is selected go to colors desaturate all right press OK on the bottom one again if you want to desaturate her one, one more time to bring her back to normal colors desaturate but I think right now is a good time to duplicate that layer just to keep it as a backup so I'm gonna back up this one right here so let's do that again this one right here so we'll colors desaturate all right press OK now you're probably gonna notice that her her color is very very like you know uh, how you call it like very very uh, desaturated because we desaturated so many times plus it's set on soft light so you have a very very faint color okay so anyways let's get this uh, this uh, hair color here move it up to the top and I duplicate it just in case and bring that back to the bottom because I if I need it later for a template bring the eyeball out check on it now we're gonna go to uh, overlay now she has this like you know dark desaturated but at the same time the color kind of pops out just a little bit you know what I mean it looks all right it looks pretty cool to me so we're gonna try to bring some focus to this picture okay again now we're gonna go to uh, select none make another transparent layer press OK get your paintbrush tool select the color of black all right along the edges of the picture go ahead and like just do this bit you know what I mean just uh, like if it's too bright like right here is too bright for me so I'm gonna just keep going around you know what I mean all the way around I'm sorry if I'm really rushing through this this uh, little tutorial because I am on time limit. I'm trying to I'm trying to do my best and show you everything that I know within that time limit. You know what I mean? Doesn't have to be uh, perfectly perfect. Kind of helps to be kind of sporadic too. Okay. Okay. Go back to your, your, your uh, <coughs> excuse me, layer dialog right here. On that layer dialog, we're gonna Gaussian blur it fairly heavily, okay? Filters, blur, Gaussian blur. Set it to about like really high, about close to 300. Press OK. All right. Now that's not the look I'm trying to look for. So we're gonna go to on the layer dialog, the one we just blurred the uh, this little what's it called vignette what do you call it on the mode selection go to soft light duplicate it a couple times see how kind of darkens just the edges but at the same time it's darkening her and you don't really want that so we have this uh, template like I said before see it down here so we're gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that one more time bring back the eyeballs to make it you know visible move it up I suppose where can we put it at? I think it's right here. Right below all the images right here. Okay. How about on top? Yeah, it's put on top. That looks better. Now set that to a soft light. See how it made her brighter, right? If that's too bright you can bring it back down just a little see what I mean so like the whole purpose of this tutorial was mainly how to use templates with colors desaturation to get the image that you want right so I'm gonna go ahead and save it and I'm pretty happy with it right now okay file save export raise image quality press save There she is. 
All right. So, uh, like I said, I'm sorry for rushing through this tutorial. You know, what I mean, I'm just I'm trying to do my best here. Hopefully, you guys like it. You know, I mean, like I said, you have to, you have to do as wild or weird as this is, but like I said, it's it's all about using little templates and little, little shortcuts like that to help you with your image. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can kind of give an idea of what I did. See, I changed the hair color, right? Desaturation with the background, polarization with a with a gradient, a gradient map, I should say, to alter the color. You know what I mean? So it it really does make the image look a lot different, better or worse, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, anyways. I know my time's running out, so uh, thanks for watching.